بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير الخلق والأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمدا وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى back to our book the adab حضور المسجد the etiquettes and manners when present or when being at the masjid. And the last things we covered was talking about some of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where it talks about the believer's heart is supposed to be attached to the masjid. And from that was the hadith of Rajulun Qalbuhu Mu'allakun Fil Masajid. One of the people who will have the shade the dhil, the shade from the shade of the throne of Allah on a day where there's no shade but Allah shade. Because the sun on Yom al will be brought closer to us by a mile's distance. And the only shade that will be made available is the shade that will come from the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he only will give it to those whom he chose from them is a person who lived his life, qalbuhu, his heart, mu'allaq, is tied and connected to the masjid. This is a tremendous virtue that no one can obtain it except the one who make their intentions sincere to Allah. The one who put efforts to obtain that reward from Allah that's in their minds when they're in the house of Allah. So for that reason, being present in the masjid has a status, has a manzil, it has a special status for us. So therefore, because of the masjid having this special status, as Allah Ta'ala says, Fi bayutin adin Allahu an turfa' The houses in which Allah has ordered that they be raised up, meaning giving high status in our hearts and in our actions. Since that's the case, then it is obligatory upon the one who intends to go to the masjid that he beautifies himself. He takes on the characteristics, the most noblest of character, the most noblest of behavior when coming to the house of Allah and the most beautiful of qualities. This has to be the thought mindset of the believer when he goes to the house of Allah because of his love for Allah, because of her love for Allah, because of his or her wanting the Jannah and to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore it is upon every Muslim to learn the ahkam, the legal injunctions, the legal verdicts in Islam for when being present in the masjid. That which the kitab, the book of Allah, the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has proven and shown us of behavior and manners with Allah when in His house. We are visitors to Allah's house. And so when we go to a person's house, do we behave any way we want? No, we behave with the best of manners, right? Who has a greater right to that than Allah from us? Nobody or nothing. So understand that reality. And also, it got to be a place that we respect more than any place. The house of Allah. It has to be a place that we use to guard ourselves and protect our brothers and sisters. The masjid has to be a place that we look at. We're going to help protect our brothers and sisters. Protect them from what? Protect them from that which will stop them learning their religion. Protect them from me harming them with my mouth and with my hands. Protect them from anything that will block their relationship and their worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is important. And that's why the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that whoever eats thum, thum, or thum, or basil, whoever eats onions or garlic, 
Then he said, La taqrabu masajidina. Let them not come to our masjid, meaning whoever eats them raw. Let him not come near our masjid because the angels are harmed. The malaika, the angels are harmed by the very same thing that the mankind is harmed by. And bad smells is one of them. That's how serious our religion is. And we have to pay attention to that when we're in the house of Allah to observe the rights of the master for each other because the Prophet Sallallahu said, لا يؤمن أحدكم None of you truly believes حتى until يحب He loves لأخيه for his brother ما يحب what he loves لنفسي for himself. Do you want somebody to disturb you when you're trying to worship Allah? So don't do that to someone else. Observe these things. These are the ahkam of the masjid. So many times the masjid prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the masjid. You know his house used to be attached to the masjid, right? And he would have a drape, a door to go right in his house. And he would sit by the door. One day he was sitting at the door of his house on the inside of the house. And he heard the people praying separately and individually, reciting out loud. This one reciting Baqarah, this one reciting Ali Imran, this one reciting I- Ikhlas. They all individually praying loudly. And the Messenger of Allah looked out and said, Do not cause disturbance upon your brother with the book of Allah. And do not raise your voice with the book of Allah. That's with the Quran. How much more with our own voices? When we talk with each other. So for that reason, we see many of the Muslims today do not observe these rights. Because of ignorance, because of and being ignorant of the legal verdicts of how we're supposed to behave when in the masjid. It could be because of having weakness in our own religion. It could be because of us being so busy with the dunya that turns us away from learning the affairs of our religion. So this is why this book is important for us to learn. So when we talk about this subject matter, it's the etiquettes of being present at the masjid is is in three categories. The first category is the etiquette when you leave from your house to go to the masjid. What is the, that's when it starts. It don't start when you get at the masjid. It starts at your home. So what is the etiquette and behavior of the believer when he leaves out with the intentions to go to the masjid. The second category that we will talk about in this book is the adab al hudur al masjid. What is the etiquette when you're present once you enter the masjid? Number three, adab al hudur al masjid yom jumu'ah. What is the etiquette of the masjid on the day of Jumu'ah? We will talk about that too, inshallah ta'ala. This is important. And we just want to mention the first one, and then we'll stop and go to pray. And that is, al khuruju that when you come out to the masjid, you must be upon ahsan al hayya the most beautiful and best look that you can have, an image that you can have, with the most nicest of clothing, and smelling good, and being clean. And this beautification means beautifying your outer how you look on the outside making sure you smell good and brushing and cleaning your teeth it's around those three things the apparent beauty that you must have what is intended by that when coming to the master which is wearing beautiful clothing meaning you must cover your aura what is the aura you know aura what is the aura of the women? Anybody know? At what? <coughs> Top to bottom. Only thing can be out, face and hands. Right? And can she wear tight clothes? No. no. no? She can't expose her body and shape with tight clothes? It's covered. She can do that? Of course she cannot. Her clothing must cover and it must conceal the shape of her body. It cannot be something where... She wearing clothes, but she's like naked. You can still see the shape of her body. And she must not wear perfume that will draw attention to her. Right? So covering her outer. For us too. What's the outer of the man? 
He said from where? To the navel to the knees. What is the outer of the Muslim when praying? That's right. To cover at least one shoulder. Not both of them, at least one. Because the prophets, and it don't have to be completely covered. Just something like if I have a tank top on. Y'all know tank top t-shirt? I got one on right now. This is according to the sunnah would be sufficient. It don't, ha- it don't mean cover the whole shoulder because the prophet saw some said, put some, he didn't say cover the shoulder. He said, place something on the shoulder. And it's mustahab, it's recommended, it's not obligatory. What is obligatory is from? The navel to the knees. Does that include the navel and the knees or it don't include it? Scholars differ about it. But the safest position to include it. And this is based off the statement of Allah Ta'ala where Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf, Ya Bani Adam, O sons of Adam, خُذُوا زِينَتَكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ masjid. كُلَّ masjid. Take your adornments near every masjid. And what they mean by masjid near when praying. When praying. Masjid means praying, prostrating. So in other words, it's in the Arabic language, Allah will always talk about a part of something but mean the whole thing. Sajda is only a part of the prayer. So when Allah says masjid here, it means place of prostration, meaning the whole salah. Okay? So Allah Ta'ala is telling us to take our adorm. And adornments is covering your outer. Not you go out with shiny clothes and you know you go and buy you some the most expensive clothing. No, it's not saying that. No, clean clothing. And you covering yourself in a manner that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated. Why? Because Allah says, Kulu wa shrabu. In the rest of the verse, eat and drink. Eat and drink. Innahu, for verily he, awala tusrifu. And do not be excessive. Do not be excessive. Do not go over the limits that Allah has set. Innahu la yuhibbu al musrifin. Because Allah does not like those who are excessive. What is excessive? Doing what Allah prohibits you to do. That's what's excessive. You understand? So this is what is incumbent upon us. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, says about that ayah. لِهَذِهِ ayah. Y'all know Ibn Kathir, right? Everybody know Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir says, لِهَذِهِ ayah. For this verse, وَمَا وَرَدَ فِي مَعْنَهَا And everything that has come in the meaning of this verse, من السنة, from the sunnah of the Prophet, Yes, yustahabbu tajammul inda salah. It is heavily, rec- highly recommended to adorn yourself, meaning with your cleanest clothing, your best of your clothing, inda salah. And plus, your beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Inna Allah ahaqqo an yutazayyana lah. That Allah has more right, that Allah has the most right. That you adorn and beautify yourself for. Like I said that yesterday when I was trying to fix my, 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 my throat before we pray. And I have everybody waiting. I say I'm trying to look good for my Lord. <laughs> and this is the attitude of the believer. This is the attitude of the believer. It's always about Allah. It's always about Allah for everything. That's always about Allah. When you speak, do it for Allah. When you're looking, look at what Allah wants you to look at. When you're listening, listen to what Allah wants you to listen to. When you walk, walk towards the thing that makes Allah happy with you. When you dress, wear the clothing that Allah has legislated for you to wear. Because we always seeking the bounty and the pleasure of Allah. As Allah Ta'ala says, أَفَمَنْ أَسَّسَ بُنْيَانَهُ عَلَى التَّقْوَى مِنَ اللَّهِ رِدْوَانْ Allah Ta'ala says, is the one who builds the foundation of his building, meaning his deeds, the deeds that you're going to do, your righteous deeds, is the one who builds the foundation of his deeds upon fearing Allah and seeking his pleasure. Better? Or the one who builds the foundation of his deeds upon a very slippery hill. And the hill, فَنْهَارَ بِهِ فِي نَادِ جَهَنَّمْ It slides with him into the hellfire. Which one is better? Which one is better to build your, your deeds upon? In other words, 
Build your deeds upon the fearing of Allah and trying to please Him through having knowledge of what pleases Allah. And don't build your foundation on anything else. Because anything else other than that is like being on a very steep hill. And that hill is very slippery with mud. What happens when you're on a muddy, steep hill? You're going to slide with you. But this sliding is into the hellfire. As Allah Ta'ala is saying, هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته